Okay? Roll. Here we go. The coercive style seems the least effective in many situations. Mr. Kernan, you see it? It has a di dictatorial flavor. It lacks flexibility and uses top-down decisions which kill initiative and new ideas. Workers feel disrespected and lose a sense of responsibility and ownership. They do not share ideas for fear they will be shot down. It erodes workers' pride and motivation, and many of them tend to adopt a negative attitude towards a leader. I will not help that bastard. Although this style has its negative effects, there are times when the coercive style can be used successfully. Why change, when change has to take place immediately, for example, a change in teaching certification requirements or, and, or hiring practices? It is recommended in general that the coercive style should be used with caution. It is only worthwhile in a real crisis situation Go ahead, go ahead. When every other method has failed. You see that? When every other method has failed. Authoritative style. The authoritative style is especially effective when a clear vision is needed and the mission of the institution needs to be reinforced using strategic plan. For example, when the enrollment of an institution falls below the expected levels, it may be attributed to attrition. You don't know what attrition is? When you lose students, they're going elsewhere, they're sick of college, whatever. Retention means you keep students, right? They're opposites. The leadership of the institution may have to implement proactive enrollment and retention strategies. It may also be attributed to the advisor's failure to serve the students effectively. In which case, they may need to practice more hands-on effective counseling, such as patrolling corridors and meeting with students in their various locations and under different circumstances, helping to resolve challenges. So you see, because Dr. King was a psychometrician in educational leadership, he knew about this and how it affects schools at all levels, because he was a principal in uh, elementary school. Catholic school for children, and then he was a campus director for this campus between like 2000 to about 2005 before he retired. All right? So he used this school as an example or any other institution. Who? Dr. King. Martin Luther King? Dr. Joseph King, sorry. Oh. Joseph <laughs> yeah, King. Yeah. Well, we're going to get to that later. No, Dr. Joseph King was from Guyana and. Um, he was, uh, he was, he had a doctorate in educational leadership and psychometrics, right? How you measure human intelligence, mm. test taking. So he was a director here. He was instructional staff in letters for a while, and then he migrated up to a campus director. He spent five years. Mm. He retired like around, maybe he was like 70 years old. He was up there in age. So he's down in North Carolina now. So because the authoritative leader states the end, he or she gives people much leeway to use the initiative and buy ownership into their plan. Like anything else, the authoritative leadership style is not a panacea. We all know what a panacea is, right? Connoisseur? No. Panacea. No, another word, right? Anybody heard of the word panacea? A cure for. It's no easy remedy. Right, that's a panacea. Right. Write it down, look it up. You may run into snafus. What is snafus? Another word. <laughs> Bottlenecks, right? No, snafus. Snafus, yeah, snafus. It's another, it's another nice word to know. Right. Hurdles, stumbling blocks, snafus. When the leader is working with colleagues and experts who are more experienced and knowledgeable than he or she is, the authoritative leader can sometimes be seen as pompous and out of touch, even though the authoritative leadership style in general may yield positive rather than negative results. Affiliative style. The affiliative style stands in contrast to the coercive style. It is a people-oriented style. 
Is that, is that the kind of leader you like to work with? Is that the kind of leader you would like to be in your organization, in your company, in your firm? A people-oriented style? It could be abused too, right? It could take advantage of you. The leader sees people as human beings first and workers second. I think that's where you was getting at with Google. They probably treat their workers this way. What? Right? They treat them as people. As people. Right. There it is. So they're using the affiliative style. It plays to workers' emotions more than tasks and goals. Affiliative leaders strive to keep workers happy and build harmonious relationships on the job. They seek unswerving loyalty of their followers. They build good rapport and share ideas. This style encourages flexibility and leads to innovation and risk taking. Unnecessary restrictions are lifted. That means a bureaucracy. And workers get the job done in a way they think to be the most effective. Affiliative leaders constantly acknowledge good workers and build excellent rapport with workers. They do not have to depend on a one-shot deal of an annual review. They indicate in them a sense of belonging by celebrating, for example, anniversaries, birthdays, or taking their staff to lunch. This leadership style is generally positive and useful in building team spirit, harmony, and fostering trust. However, Leaders have to be on their guard. So the affiliative style should be used in conjunction with other styles. Remember, it says you have to be resilient to be a leader. Any one of these styles can come into play at any given moment, depending on the circumstances, right? And the context that you find yourself. Also, the leader has to be aware that praise for those who are doing well can become punishment for those whose performance is poor. Right? You could be hype, hype, you know, hyping up somebody for doing good work, but at the same time, the other person feels bad. What about me? Would you pat me on the, on the shoulder sometimes? What am I doing wrong? Right? And building a team spirit is what Ms. Phillip did earlier today. She had a little Christmas party. We sang Christmas carols, holiday spirit, and that's good for any organization. <coughs> Sit down. Sit down. 